Standing, like uh, we're talking about Phil about making this class, with my good friend David here, I was thinking that the main difference in these two approaches might be that uh, what what's in your mind is is if you're playing if, if you're varying the melody, then you're going to be hearing the melody in, in your mind, and it's going to be coming out of the mandolin. So no matter even though it, like when David's playing it, it gets more and more involved, and there's more interesting phrases that are developed. You still have some reference almost at all times to. Tonight I'm all alone with the And I suppose in the in the holes of the melody, where there are spaces there, then you might insert some other things of interest that propel from one part of the melody to the other. But you're always hearing somewhere, right? You can always find your way back to da di da 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 Now when I'm playing, I never play da di da 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 so what am I thinking about? I'm thinking about, here's an A chord for a while, and then to the D we go, and back to A. <laughs> and then I'll play a massive A licks, and then I'll play my E7 licks with a lot of jazz notes in them. In your solos, there were still very much references, not necessarily to the melody, but the rhythm of the melody. Yeah. The, 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 phrase, the, the, the phrasing and the, and the kind of like textural references that weren't directly melodic but still maintain a, a recognizable shape to it. Yeah, and that would be what I was referring to earlier about don't play the melody, you know, in terms of a jazz player's approach, don't play the melody, but play another melody. So whatever you play, you want it to have contour and shape to it. So that maybe somebody, if you did write it out and play it off the page, or if somebody did memorize it or hum it, it would, it would be hummable. It wouldn't be just... Yeah, you do want to shape this stuff. But there's a difference in the context, too, of a tune like that, where there are lyrics, and in a tune that someone is singing, which draws you back each time right. to the basic melody, so that it allows now more leeway, uh, and still maintaining the validity of taking a solo that's going to be a variation on something, as opposed to um, you know a straight-out instrumental tune, where you need to establish the melody yeah. uh, and then take your variations, but you know, at the same time still maintaining the, you know, the, uh, that idea of uh, Jethro saying, you know, I want somebody to be I should recognize the tune. Yeah, yeah. And that, that's that's part of the whole situation too, like how well known is the tune? What what can we assume that our listeners would already uh, have control of? You know. And they feel, and the listener fills in blanks in their own mind about yeah. what the melody is and what the tune is. Yeah. You know, so they they've got their soundtrack running in their head. That, that's why the jazz cats sometimes don't even state the whole melody. And I'm personally not in favor of that. Uh, I I like to hear the whole melody. But at the head, at least. Right, and, and all the way through. But mm -hmm. like if, you know, if you have jazz records, you probably noticed that. Uh, like they might, if they're playing night and day, they might play night. Right? And maybe that's as much melody as they'll play, and then it goes right into... Right? And they'll start improvising maybe in the fourth or fifth part. I'm, I'm not in favor of that. I always like to hear, no matter what style or what type of tune you're playing, let's play the melody all the way through. And then when you come back in for your solo, then it's time to do it. Even, even Parker did, you know, that, all those recordings of his tour out west to Kansas and all that, that, you know, everybody thought he was just in problem from, from bar one, and he was, yeah. you know, you listen to the, the head every night, he's playing the same head. Yeah. You know, he's established in that melody, even though it was very, very complex, mm -hmm. he established the melody, his melody. His own melody. Yeah. Yeah. And then went from there. And then it was in problem. I'd say one of the, my favorite things about the guys that we look up to in bluegrass, you know, the Monroes and the uh, Tony Rices and, the, and guys like that, they get the melody in there and then their signature licks are in those holes of the phrases, you know, where uh, <clears throat> it would be the natural space that a singer would leave a, a hole. That's where they put in the signature lick. Is that and, what you're doing too? Yeah, I kind of know. I kind of go with that a lot of times, you know, that Phil 
fills that spot without sacrificing the melody entirely. We'll play something more, uh, let's play something more like swing. 